Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned earlier this week, we have a really big guest here joining us via telephone. He's currently hopping around the globe, but we managed to catch up with him somewhere in his tour. Please welcome the one and only Avram Free. Hello. Shalom Aleichem. It's been a long time, I think, no? Shalom Avreichem Avrimo. Ma shlomcha. Baruch Hashem Yishtabach Shemolad. See, I've been brushing up on my Hebrew. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Uh, Remel, you know, we, we've, we've been, uh, Baruch Hashem, interviewing you so many years on this show, you know, and we, we have a Kesher, me and you, ourselves, from back in the days when I had my magazine, when I used to write from Country Yossi Magazine. We've been talking about, respectively, English and Hebrew albums for so long, and it's finally happened. What kind of response are you getting? The uh, CD is about two weeks old now, two and a half weeks old, so mm-hmm. it's pretty fresh. People are still, you know, getting to know it and uh, getting comfortable with it. I've gotten many, many heartwarming texts and emails, and people are actually, <laughs> they're loving loving it very, very much. What can I tell you? Some songs are really touching people and, and uh, getting a lot of comments on certain songs. Um, for me, it's actually, this is a, a, a trailblazing step because for an American uh, Hasidic singer to put out a CD, I mean, look, I have songs in Ivrit before. I have Alek Atan, I have Rak Tfila, I've done uh, Mishu Alech Tamiditi, I've done Hebrew songs right. before. But right, right. I, I couldn't fight the, the uh, all the requests in Eretz Yisrael for a full CD in Ivrit. I just, it was too many, too many requests. I said, no, let's, let's go for it. Let's try it. So um, we did it. And Baruch Hashem, I think we have wonderful material on the album, all with a very wonderful spiritual message, not just Stam, you know, Stam songs. Right. And um, like I said, the reaction that I'm getting is very heartwarming. And I guess I'll know just in a few months to give you an update, you know, how it's selling and how it's doing as far as numbers go. Right. But so far, it's very heartwarming. Well, I mean, I, I must tell you, somebody who doesn't speak Hebrew naturally. You know, I, I am, first of all, I'm very thankful that you included translations to all these songs in English. I did it for you. Just for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, you know, because sometimes when you have a regular Chumash or from Gemaras or from Tehillim, you know, the reality is I feel that I would say more than 50% of English-speaking Americans or Europeans don't really understand the language so well. You know, they'll sing it, they'll know it, they'll get into the rhythm of the of the melody, but the actual understanding of the lyrics isn't there. Mm-hmm. And more so when you're writing Ivrit, you know, most people think, uh, his, you know, his Israeli album, okay, it's probably just um, like Mizrahi-style music, but it's the same kind of lyrics, you know, that are just Hebrew, but this is not. This, this is literally Ivrit. This is speaking the Hebrew language. This is not mm. uh, Chumash or anything like that. Yes, somebody asked me, um, weren't you afraid to undertake a project of all songs in Ivrit? I mean, it's not really your, your crowd, you know? I mean, uh, weren't you afraid? Weren't you um, worried? I said, you know something? I actually was. I was afraid some years ago when I started doing the Chabad series. Mm-hmm. I was afraid when I started doing Yom Tov Erlach in Yiddish. You know what? I'm not afraid anymore. I'm going to take chances. <laughs> Thank God those chances worked out just fine. Again, yes. it's not it doesn't sell, obviously, as much as a regular album because it's just meant for a smaller audience, you know? Right. But uh, Baruch Hashem, like I said, the, the reaction is hot warming. Those who appreciate it, appreciate it. It's those who it speaks to, it speaks to. We're trying to get to every every genre, to every crowd possible through music that they like. So this is an Ivrit, Ivrit CD. See how it does. And it's funny yeah, because, sure. you know, most people would say, okay, you know, um, Avram Fried's released, I don't know, 20 or 30 albums over the year. You know, how does he constantly come up with, with new, fresh-sounding songs and lyrics? And over here, he's doing something that's never been attempted by somebody before, you know, right. to don exactly. all Israeli out. I mean, you can't get fresher than that. Well, Yossi, it all started with Alek Atan, let, let's be honest. Um, they wish to send me this wonderful gift through Yisha Lapidot, this amazing song of Alek Atan, which is still going so strong to this very day, mm-hmm. even though it's, I don't know how many years later. And ever since then, there's been this little voice uh, inside of me and many voices on the outside who kept saying, you know, you got to do more in Ivrit because it's just nice to hear a, an Israeli song with a, with a bissel in the shumah, you know, with a little gefil and a little hearts in it. Uh, you should do more. And over the years, I just, you know, stood on the back burner. Then came along Yerushalayim Shabalev recently, and then came along Kamatov Shaniv Gashnu recently. So we had something to work with. Uh, these two songs actually do appear on the CD, so they finally found their home. Right. And uh, like, like you said, here we are. We're celebrating a, a new CD, all in Ivrit, and um, it was actually different singing it in the studio, I must tell you. Really? How uh, so? Yeah, it was a different experience, because usually I'm used to coming into the studio singing a song from Tilim or from Siddur, or from the Gemara, or from, from a holy source, where, where the, the, um, the message is already there. I picked a certain lyric because I like the lyric, so... Mm-hmm. 
I'm coming in with something ready to work with. I, I feel something already. I'm, I'm, the words are holy, written by tzaddikim, written by holy people. You know, it's, it's already you're ahead of the game to begin with. Right. Here, these are songs that in Ivrit, you have to sort of connect so much to the lyric to bring out what the song is saying. Like, you have no place to start with. It's written by, you know, contemporary composers. Right, which we'll get to, we'll get to that in a few minutes, right? Yeah, right, for sure, for sure. It was just, I had to be, dig deep inside to myself to let people feel and see what I'm singing. Like, I had to smile at certain lyrics. I had to sort of be sad at certain lyrics. Like, each song was a story unto itself that I had to, I had to find the right look on my face how to, people will hear me sing the song. Right. Almost like, will they see the sounds? Will they see what I'm feeling? Will they, will they feel the smile? Will they feel the sadness? Will they, uh, it was, it was just more it, it difficult in a way than singing a song from uh, a Tanya or another of them. Right. Well, let me ask you, did you have somebody in the studio with you, an Israeli, let's say for pronunciation or for enunciation to help you get the words right? Or are you good so question, fluent in good Hebrew? Good question. Good question. Good question. <laughs> Actually, I did not. I did not. Yossi Tibrik, who I worked with for many hours, mm-hmm. my, uh, my engineer, uh, he knows a little bit of Hebrew, so he, he guided me here and there. I had a question. I called my, my connections in Israel, and on the spot they told me, and there was one or two times where I sent them the song after I spent hours doing it, and they said, ah, uh-uh, this word is missed, you know, this, you're missing a shva, you're missing a komat, you're missing a papa. <laughs> you didn't pronounce it right. I had to fix a couple of words, but it was... Smooth sailing. I guess the next booklet that you print, the next printing of the next 50,000, you should have the Nikudot inside the Hebrew side as well. Uh, yeah, yes. it, it doesn't help me if I have Nikudot. Sometimes you, the Shvo and the Patach comes out wrong. You know, the Kudos doesn't help you if you don't know how to say it. Right, <laughs> right. And, and the listener could always follow along with your singing and then That's figure true. out the words 100%. Okay, good idea. Um, you mentioned Yuval. Uh, you mentioned, not Yuval, you mentioned uh, Yishai Lapidot before. Yes. Um, did you attempt to see if Yisha had any other Hebrew songs for this album? I did, I did, I did, I did. He sent me some songs, but uh, not, none that I connected with, so strike one on this one. Yeah, it's fine, I'm yeah. sure, I'm, I'm, I'm here to show there'll be another Israeli album down the line. Hopefully we won't have to wait 30 years for it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I must tell you that, uh, it, it's just interesting, I was looking over the, um, some of the old albums and the, the new ones lately on my, on, my, on my page there on the website, mm-hmm. and... Um, it occurred to me that this is another color in the rainbow of, of the music that I've brought out over the years. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. I must say, I'm, I'm kind of proud of it. There's Chazonis on some albums. There's, you know, there's Chabad, like I mentioned. There's Yiddish. Right. Now a new color. A new color, a total CD in Ivrit. I just think it's, it adds to the nice rainbow of, uh, of what we call our popular Hasidic music today. Well, I definitely agree. And, and, and last year when we talked, you said you were working on a new Yom Tovarlach Yiddish album. And I, this, is, I, this is next. And I think, I think that after you know, this color to the rainbow, it, it, it would be great to brighten up the Yiddish color in the rainbow a little bit and bring it back to 2017, 2018, you know? Someone, someone said to me the other day, you know the last time you brought out a Yom Tovarlach CD? It was 23 years ago. I said, what? Can't that be. That long? Wow. Wow. That's been a long time. Well, Amachaya came out recently, so right. um, that was all Yiddish. And by the way, this is a new record for me, because Bring the House Down came out, I think, exactly a year ago in Elo, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. This, is, this here, is the quickest time you've released exactly, two consecutive albums. This is the quickest albums. time between CDs. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the reason to celebrate. I remember one of the things that I was very excited about with the release of the CD is an arranger and a composer that I've been following uh, immensely in the last, I would say, last two, three years. He's he's made a mark in Hasidic music and Jewish music uh, by the name of Udi Damari. Good for you. And you guys ha- and you have four songs from him. And I, I was I was so excited, you know. For me, obviously, uh, the biggest song out of the four that I'm loving is Achim Ben Nefesh. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what happened. Yes, uh, Yuval and I we had um, I think it was eight or nine songs ready to go. Mm-hmm. We were happy with the material, but we were short. We needed a few more songs, and right. uh, we're just slapping. Nothing was happening. I wasn't getting the material that I was looking for. And one day, Abishter in his uh, in his infinite kindness. This fellow out of the blue calls me up. Udi Damari, never heard of him, didn't know who he was. Uh, so I gave him my email address. Right. And he sent me uh, two songs. He sent me Over Mashe Over. That's another and he favorite sent me of Achim mine. Banefesh. Wow. And I said, I listened, I listened to the songs. I said, whoa. First of all, I, in fact, we needed two upbeat songs. And right. the rest was like all slow ballads. I said, this is a, this is a Matanam in Hashemayim. It's unbelievable. Took the songs right away. He sent me another song called Pashut Anashim, mm-hmm. which talks about how uh, the world basically lives and breathes on the simple people who you know, do things quietly, don't make any headlines, get things done, you know. And at first I didn't, I said, what's, what's the message here? Simple people, the world lives on simple, I don't know, I didn't get it. He says, listen to it again. Mm-hmm. So I wrote it for you, listen to it again. Okay. And I, I can't hug him enough to thank him that, I, that he pushed me because to me, Pashut Anashim is the gem of the album. Really? Absolutely. 
Message wise, I definitely message wise, stunning wise, melody wise, or just the whole song is just something very special about it. It's just very touching. So I had three songs from him. Then I see this guy's really good. This guy's no, he knows what he's doing. I said, Buddy, you know what? I took out my cell phone and I found a text that I wrote uh, two years ago on an airplane ride back from Eretz Yisrael to New York. Mm-hmm. After a successful concert uh, tour in Eretz Yisrael, I was on the plane. Everybody was sleeping around me, snoring, and I'm sitting talking to God. And I said, God, how can I thank you for giving me a wonderful, successful tour now in Eretz Yisrael? I was really happy. I was on a high. Mm-hmm. I started writing down some lyrics. In Ivrit, I wrote some lyrics. I said, Imayiti yachol, if only I could, Hashem, I, I would give you a big hug. Right. But I can't. Uh, little me, how can I give you yeah, a hug? You are, you, you are you. Right. And then it occurred to me, so I said, but with, if I sing, if I sing for your honor, and if I have you in mind when I sing, then with every note, I'm basically hugging you back in return. Mm-hmm. This is what I had sitting on my phone. I said, Udi, Yeshli Milim, I have some lyrics sitting here on my phone. I'll send it to you. See if you can make a song out of it. I sent him the lyrics. He touched it up a little bit. Added here, took off here. An hour later, he sent me a song called Anishar, which is on the album. I think it's song number three. Three. Yeah. Which is gem number two on the album. Aw. Came out beautiful. Within an hour, he sent me a song. Okay, we tweaked it here and there a little bit, but then we had the album ready to go. And that basically uh, propelled the album to come out. That's, that was that was the Maka Bepatish, his songs. No, I am so excited. Not just his songs and the lyrics, but also the arrangements. They're, they're oh, so amazing. fresh. The and guy is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Of course, amazing. one of the other composers is your longtime friend and musical director, Yuval. Yes, I, I, can't, I can't say enough about Yuval. Some of the arrangements he did on this album, they're just so beautiful. Shlach Koach, which is a song that was composed by Rami Kleinstein, actually. It was a very famous, famous name in Israel. Yeah, he's a very famous. Uh, most well-known, I believe, recently for... Matanot, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. We actually became good friends over... I, we performed together many concerts, and we've become good friends. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually sent me an email saying, Eze Matana, Eze Berachamin in Hashamayim, that you and I hooked up on this song. He was very happy with the, uh, with the Bitsua, with, right. the, with the performance of Baruch Hashem. Um, he did such great arrangements, Maslul Mechadash, which is the first song on the album, mm-hmm. um, and many, many others, Zeh Lazeh. Yushalayim he, he, he arranged most of them. Um, just so to the, to the Zach, you know, to the point. We didn't need no, no brass and no no shtick. Just beautiful um, arrangements to, to complement the singer and, and bring out the, the best of the song. So I'm lucky. And, lucky. Of, and of course, the title track is his song. Exactly. Kamatov Shenev Gashna was his song. I remember the first time you released it. It must have been two or three years ago. Yeah. I think yeah, I was yeah. the only person in America who heard of it. You know, And I played mm-hmm. on the station and I, I'm stopped. I got to tell you, Avram, on the last year, I'm stopped so many times by people who want to know what's that Avram song, Avram Fried Hebrew song, Kama, Kama song. Something. I, what does it mean? What are the? And <laughs> I'm it, kidding. Wow. No, I'm serious. And it was wow. so funny. And then you just go out and you, and you you know you named the, you named the album after it. It was just so funny. Well, I figured it was the, you know it's the best best title. I'm a tough shindy though. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, your no, thanks no a thanks to the fans 100. Uh, percent yeah. Avram Fried with us via telephone talking about his latest album Kamatov Shen with the Israeli album. Um, going deeper into this booklet, you know, Avram, I'm looking at track 11 Shirot Hasavim, mm-hmm. and I, I see his sound. I see it says Lachain Naomi Shemer. Now the only Naomi Shemer that I know of. Is the world renowned Naomi Shemer, who of course wrote the words to Shalim Shel Zahav? That's her. This is her. That's her. How did you get her? Well, this is actually a, this is just a very famous song she wrote many years ago. Mm-hmm. It's been done. It's been covered by many many artists. Uh, Yuval suggested that we do this song. He felt that we can raise it up a notch, mm-hmm. and um, it's actually based on the words of Reb Nachman, who talks about uh, how the shepherd in the field hears the singing of the grass. Um, and I, I happen to have liked the song for many, many years. I just never thought of doing it. Interesting. Until Yival suggested it. And um, thank God getting very, very strong comments on that because many popular artists have done that in Israel. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me to get, um, you know, such compliments like uh, this is probably, the, you know, one of the best uh, performances of uh, Shirata Savim is quite heartwarming for an American to come along and, and kind of take some spotlight away from all the others. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've honestly never heard the song. It is a gorgeous song. It's, it's, uh, oh, it's, it's yeah. very, very peaceful. Peaceful, very soothing, you know. The yes, yeah, I, must, I must tell you something. Yes. People want to know, what takes so long, you know, four, five, six hours working on a song in the studio? Mm-hmm. What, what, what takes so long? And the answer, the answer really is that it's not so much the singing. Like you said, it's, it's the mood. It's trying to set a mood. So here we're singing a song about a shepherd in the field with grass. So I have to sort of think, say to myself, okay, how much voice do I give in this song? Do I smile? Like, what face am I singing it with? Like I mentioned before a little bit, they have to see the sound. What am I feeling during the song? Mm-hmm. And this is very, you know, some sort of, I have to close the lights to get a certain, you know, feel of serenity and a certain feel of, of, of sensitivity. It takes, that takes t- 
time. Once I get connected to the mood of the song, th then I can start singing it. You know what I'm saying? Then I, then I start worrying about, okay, am I hitting the note? Am I getting, you know? But first is the mood. Am I smiling enough? Am I, do, you feel the, do you feel the wind blowing on the grass? Do you feel the mood of the shepherd? You know, th this takes time. 100%. I mean, I have to connect to the lyric. A, lo a lot of time. people say over the last few years, I've heard from many people in the business that most people can sing, you know, and in a studio setting it's definitely different, but, you know, there are things you can do as an engineer to tweak a singing, but to e emote emotion from somebody, exactly. to connect from them just through the music themselves, to, to gain an aspect of uh, a feeling of what the song might, might encompass without really understanding the words. That's the, exactly. that, that's the, the way of a, a really good uh, singer and vocalist, somebody who can connect with the listener without having any, exactly. any kind of You know, of they, they say about, about yeah. filler or about a chazan. What's the most, what's the first important thing about, a, about filler or a chazan? So, two very fami familiar words, pirish hamilis. Those are the first, that's right. the first thing you have to, what are you saying? You have to hear what you're saying. If you're not connecting to the, you know, today there are songs where, <laughs> where the lyric doesn't really go with the music. Doesn't right. go, it's like, it's, it's, you know, so that's the first thing. Hear what you're saying and that's, that takes time to connect to because sometimes you're not in the mood. You come into the studio, you're not in the mood to cry, not in the mood to smile or be happy. But the lyric begs that it slaps it out of you. If you hear right. what you're saying, then there has to be a certain look on your face when you're singing so people, people should feel what you're experiencing. No, that's... You know, it's interesting. Somebody once came to the Rebbe and asked, how come a postcard of a beautiful sunset costs 15 cents and a Picasso painting of, of the same thing costs hundreds of thousands of, the, of dollars? Right. And the Rebbe explained because a postcard, true, it's the real thing, the real McCoy, but it's cold. It is what it is. It's a snapshot. Or it's, a, a, it's a reproduction of a snapshot. It's not even original. Yeah, right, right, right. But a painting is the artist puts his feelings into a painting. Mm -hmm. His ups, his downs, his struggles, his, 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 his moods. His life. That yes. cost, that's why it costs so much money, because it's alive. And the Rebbe said that's the difference between Malachim and a Yid. A Malach is like a, like a postcard. He is what he is. Very holy. Wow. But it's a, it's a malach, you know. A malach doesn't have any, any struggles. Because Ayid is alive. You're off the wagon. You're on the wagon. You're falling. You're, 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 you're doing tshuva. You're, you're trying. You're struggling. Ups and downs. That's, that's a good life. Bar. That's, that's a good that's bar. special. That's a good Yeah, that's bar. special. Yeah. So in the studio, you know, somebody once asked me, how do you feel when you go into the studio? I said, it's, very, it's a very scary place. Because amazing, amazing things can happen in the studio. Sometimes you come into the studio, and after an hour, it just doesn't happen. You go home. Right. It's just it's a gate niche. It doesn't, it's like nothing is, it's not happening, you know? It just doesn't go, so you go home. But sometimes you come into the studio, and you connect to a song, and you're, you're, you're flying. You're so above the cloud that it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience of, of going so high through a song. And, and you didn't, you didn't go studio. in, and you didn't it's go alive. in, you didn't go in with the mind frame that this is where the song would take you. Just kind of exactly, happened. exactly. So you, you never know. You never know. The studio can be disappointing, or it could take you to the Kissy Hakov. You know, it's amazing. Standing in front of a microphone can can be amazing, or it could be uh, disappointing. Yeah. You know, depending on the day. With us via telephone, album free, talking about his brand new album, Kamatov Shnev Gashna, featuring songs Gushalim Shablev. I, I wanted to commend you that out of thirteen tracks, only two songs we've heard before. You know, you could have thrown on Rock Tfila and and a couple of other uh, songs, you know, but you, you kept the Shalem Shalev, which, which was released last year for the concert, and Kamatov, which was released uh, a year or two prior to that. Um, right. I do want to talk to you about two more composers before I move on. Uh, yeah. named, By the uh, way, Yossi, I, yes. I put on those two songs only for one reason, because they, they really didn't have a home. They were singles. Right. So, and they weren't available online as a, as a, as a single by itself. I'm not sure. Look, I believe in giving people the money's worth. You know, I'm right. not going to put on Actifila. That's, that's, 100%. You know, for sure not. No, go ahead. So I wanted to talk to you about uh, Tomer Haddadi yes. and um, the Ishari Bo. Now, I'm wondering, I know you did a project about a year and a half, two years ago. A song was called Psach Libcha. Mm. It was you, David Dor, Kobe Aflao, Ishari Bo, and others. Is this the first time that you met these two composers or that you had a connection? Or, or was there something that went back further? So, Tomer Haddadi. Yes. Wonderful, talented young man. I met him originally on one of the kosher cruises. Um, he was on board. Really? Yeah. And uh, he joined. I came with my keyboard player. He came for um, he came for Dudu Fisher. Uh huh. And we just we started talking, and then we started <clears throat> jamming a little bit. And uh, I actually invited him to come do one song with me during my program. Mm -hmm. And we hit it off. And he was in New York, um, what is it, a year? I'm not sure how long ago. And I said, you know what, I have this idea about Kol Hadrachim, you know, all roads. So, you know, I, I, I travel a lot, but Yerushalayim is always on my mind. And I said, let's do a song where the idea is 
All roads lead to Yerushalayim. And I gave him this lyric, Kol Adrachim, Hashvilim, Hakvishim, Hashlatim, Tma'ot, Machshavot, you know, he liked it. And uh, at the piano in my home, we, we worked on this song together. So that was, that was Yerushalayim Sheba Lev. Interesting, okay. A while after that, I mean, he, he liked what he heard, you know, when I, when I sang for him. So um, I gave him this idea, which a great tzaddik once said, that if all Jews would extend their hands together towards Shomayim, this one long chain would reach the heaven, and if he would knock on that door with this hand, surely he would open up all the gates. I, I love that song. I played it last week. Yeah, it is such that. an amazing message. It's, it's like, you exactly. know, forget about our differences, forget about what we agree upon, what we don't agree upon. Just let, Let's just hold let's hands extend together. Your hand. Yeah, That's all. Extend your hand. Put our differences and aside. That's pretty much exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. So I said, Let, let's do a sort of song where you can see people holding their hands on each other's shoulders and swaying back and forth, you know? So he found the perfect, you know, rhythm for that. And Zelaza was, was, was born. So two beautiful gems from, from uh, Tomer Hadadi, Shalim Shabalev and uh, Zelaza. He actually sent me a new song yesterday to listen to. <laughs> so we're, we're in touch. That's and good. And hopefully there'll be more stuff coming from, from the two of us. So it had nothing to do with that song that was released. So what about no. uh, Yisha Rebo? I mean, Yisha Rebo, I met many times. Just actually the other day in Israel, we did a concert together. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a very talented, he, he, he's gone to the, you know, really, really fast, become a big popular singer in Israel. I think it, I'm man, not sure if it's guy. his voice of Remel or or his delivery of his songs. There's just something about him. It's very it, unique yes. sound. And easy very to listen to. Soothing. Yes. Soothing. Soft, um, soft, and he's a sweet guy. It, it goes exactly with his personality. Mm-hmm. That's exactly who he is. He's sweet, and he's just a lovable guy. And he's writing. He has he has an interesting way of writing songs because he'll take lyrics like from from the from Sidra, from Tilim, but he'll take it from right field, left field, middle field. He'll make a whole tzimis out of and make it all rhyme and bring it together. Very interesting way of writing. Interesting. And uh, he said, you know, I have a song for you. I said, really? Well, you said it. He sent me the song, a uh, cute, cute country kind of style song. My head, um, what did I call it? Rak Milim Pashut. Rak Milim Shutot. Very cute. How, um, you know, sometimes just simple words to say thank you to Hashem. No fancy words, just simple words. Sometimes, you know, describe um, how we feel and we want to thank Hashem for His, for his uh, kindness. Mm-hmm. And uh, Yuval and I love this song. Again, very just, you know, guitars, no fancy arrangements, no, no, no big, um, and we did the song, and Baruch Hashem, I think it came out, I love, have to love that song, very cute song. It's funny you keep saying very, very simple arrangements. Last year when we were talking, you were saying how you wish you could create just, you know, like a simple band album, with like four or five pieces, no symphonies, no strings, no brass, and over here it looks like, you know, in the studio with the magic, you've done it. Exactly, and people are telling me what different on this album is, on each song, they can hear every breath that I'm taking. I'm not fighting with 60 million musicians, you know, and 60 mm-hmm. million tracks. So it helps for the singer to come through when there's less less information going on. Now, the last composer that is on this album we didn't discuss is, uh, well, first of all, there's uh, Baruch Roni, which I am not familiar with. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about him. Very good. So he, again, another another Hashkocha Pratis. Mm-hmm. He was on a show some years ago in Israel playing keyboard for another singer. Like another one my, of these, really? Yep. Yep, that was my guest at, at one of my concerts. And um, afterwards, he says to Yuval, you know, I, I, I'm a composer, I have some stuff. So, uh, send, send, send your material. So he sent us three songs. Two of them I recorded. This is one, another song that's, that's done, didn't make it onto the album. Mm-hmm. And another song that's also done, didn't make it onto the album. So one out of, one out of three, one out I of took. Three. Very talented fellow, Hashem Yilachem Lachem. Good upbeat song, and I'm getting re- comments now that this is becoming the, the hot song now at, at Simchas. Interesting. Yep. I didn't know that. Uh, the last composer, I'm not sure if I got my information right, Meir Banai. Now, was, was, is this the Meir Banai that's the famous Israeli singer that was nifted earlier this year or not? Exactly. Exactly, exactly. In Israel, there's a very, very, very famous musical family called the Banai family. Yes. They were, I think the father was, was a big uh, star in Israel and many brothers, and uh, they've written some, some great, great popular Israeli songs. Yeah, there's uh, uh, Avetar. 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 And one, yes, yeah, Avetar one Banai. Two. Mayor yeah. Banai. I think there are others. I don't, I'm not really sure what the Mayor, Mayor I've also heard, I believe. Yes, Mayor. Very, very talented, talented family. And um, Yuval actually introduced me to this song about a year or two ago, we, and we started doing it at concerts. And I said, you know, this is a great song. Let's put it onto the album. Called, uh, we called it El Ha'or. El Ha'or, all, right. Talking about light. I said, if it's light, and it's, it's very talking to me, you know. I like light. <laughs> right. So, and the melody is very nice, and it's a good horror feel. And uh, we put it on, put it onto the album. This El to ha- me or. sounds like an Elonig, you know, Ma'ani, Ani, Rak Ben Adam, you know. It's, mm, 
Yeah, yeah. Got to go to the light. Definitely got to go to the light. light. So, so I've, I've rambled. The light. one question I haven't asked you: When, when did ahead. when did this thing with you and Ivrit start? What was it? Was it was it uh, doing concerts in Israel, or is it something else in your life that started this thing of of wanting to know Hebrew, or wanting to sing in Hebrew, and, and going with Hebrew music? Well, like I said, I think it was really a lekatan. Right. So it was, was it was all Yishai's fault, you're saying? Yeah, exactly. All Yishai. I think that's when it started, you know, from 15 years ago. Um, I was surprised how um, Aleka Tanya, see, is quite popular in Israel. Very popular. And it keeps getting stronger and stronger every day. People use this song by Simchis. This song is played on, on the March of the Living in Eretz Yisrael. It's, it's, it's applicable for many situations, and it's just a very popular song. Mm-hmm. I listen back to it sometimes, and I say to myself, it's a very heavy, like, American, you know, you, you can tell I'm not Israeli with the Havara that, I, that I'm singing with. It's a very heavy accent. And people still like it. There was something, there was some feeling in there. There's some neshama in it that people connected with. And I said, you know what, maybe I can do more than just one one song. And then Rak Tfilah came along, and Mishra Lech Tamiditi, and Shalim Shabbat Lev, and Kamal Tavshin Nivigashnu. So, so we, slowly, slowly, the material started coming together, and we said, let's do a whole album. Now, with some of these songs that you just mentioned that you've previously recorded, and you weren't, like like you said, you weren't, you know, you sounded a little bit like an American doing a, a right. Ivrit album. Is there anything in your mind possibly to redo these now with better... No. Nah, they are what no, they are, because that's no, how they're known in the world. Black Fila is such, such a big hit in Eretz Yisrael. Amishu Halech Tamiditi. I was given the greatest compliment by the composer, who is 85 years old, who's still busy performing in Israel. He lives in Haifa, who mm-hmm. wrote Mishu Halech Tamiditi. The greatest compliment that he gave me was that, he said to me, many famous Israeli artists did this song, but... And your rendition, I feel, I feel the lyric. I wow. feel, I feel the words. I feel the neshama. You know, yep. so, what, what can I tell you? I'm, I'm humbled, very humbled by all this. And like I said before, it's another color in the rainbow. And uh, I hope people, you know, like I said, it's still new. And we'll talk a few months from now and we'll see how, it, how, it's, how it's doing. Well, Vrema, I, be- I believe people are loving it. I'm definitely enjoying it. Uh, I had somebody uh, who, who has an affiliation with Mostly Music that, you know, was like, I heard they have it in the warehouse, but they're not giving it out for two weeks mm-hmm. because you had it ready early, which, which you know, I also have right. to commend you. To have an album ready weeks before its release, not even a year after the last album, where you can release it properly on time, digitally, and everything was 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 amazing. Baruch Hashem, yes, it came but, together. But you know, he his text the first the first twenty four hours was like, I'm loving every every song on this album, you know, because I was like, you know, I didn't get it yet, and I was like, so which ones, you know, are your favorites? And he's like, every song, mm. you know. And then we started to go into I'm, I'm, it. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting a lot of those, I'm getting a lot of those. Baruch Hashem. So Vremel, what's next? I started working on Yiddish gems. You'll see. Whatever happened to the English English album we discussed a while ago? Yeah. That's that's, that's on the burner. That's on the burner. Yeah. So the next thing is going to be uh, Yontav Verlech Yiddish album. Lee Nether. I, I I hope so. I hope so. Interesting. Is there going to be a lot of a lot of brass and a lot of strings on it? Mm, no, I, strings maybe because some of those songs just you know are, are beautiful ballads and uh, right. and stories. So strings might be nice, but no 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 brass. I don't think. Well, if I can throw my my idea into the Avram Fried mix, I'm Please. I'm definitely. Interested in another album along the lines of Imesh Gochech Yerushalayim. But with Symphony? Symphony. Well, are you Some kidding of the me? Biggest songs. I want an album like that. Oh, I don't so- want to go there. That's, that's too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take me there, please. I'm too old for that. Oh, uh, Vremel, you're not Don't too old. Everybody says your voice is getting better with every... You know, that, that was some of the discussions we had. The pronunciation and enunciation of Hebrew, mm-hmm. how very well you did, and how your voice, it's... I, I, I know you're going to say it's Yossi Tiberg or, or mm-hmm. it's Yuval, but your voice with every album just seems to get better and better. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. I mean, what, is there any process that you're doing daily to keep it uh, the way it is? Well, vocalizing is important. Exercising is important. And see, after the Shema, is very important. That's definitely most important, right? You know, I could tell you. Uh, you see, besides all these albums and things, I'd like to do another carp. Oh, I don't want to call it a carpool. I want to call it a kumzit with you. <laughs> yeah, it's a Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna make an appointment with, with my, with my car guys to put on some cameras. Good. I enjoyed we'll, the we'll, first one. We'll get and together. Many, many people did. I got a lot of comments on that. Baruch Hashem. You know, what, you know what the funny part is? We still had about 45 minutes of footage that nobody got to see. Wow. Maybe, maybe one day, Avremel. Maybe one day. Who knows? Anyways, who knows? Uh, Avremel, I wanted to... It's, it's Rosh Chodesh El, so I, I'm not sure we'll... I mean, hopefully we'll do... We'll see about a Kumzitz before uh, Yom Nerum. Not sure about it with your traveling. I mean, you're jumping all over the globe from what I'm understanding. Uh, you're, you're like in Israel almost every week right now, right? Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Like I said, for... A small country, they do a lot of concerts, and uh, the bracha there is, is me'al ha'teva. Just, uh, it's very humbling, very humbling. And uh, by the way, you mentioned the Elul. 
Yes. So you remind me that um, something very special happens in the month of Elul, where the Melech comes out to the field. That's the marshal they give in the, the Holy Sorim. Mm-hmm. The whole year, the king is in the palace. They have to have connections to get through. Right. But in Elul, the king comes out to all the people called Melech Basada, even to those who are in the field, who are working and are, are not in the Beis HaMedrash. And he says to all of us, Kindalach, what do you need? I'm here. Talk to me. So this is the time to, to talk to Hashem and to ask Him everything we need, request what we need. Certainly a, a good Kibbench New Year. And um, I must tell you that, you know, talking about music and singing and happiness and, and, and inspiring people through music, uh, one big disappointment is that another year is going by and Mashiach still hasn't come. So that has to bother us, that we didn't succeed in, in uh, bringing him, bringing the house down, so to speak. A hundred percent. And uh, so if he's in the field and we can talk to him, so I think it's why that instead of asking for Panosa and Gizun and Nachas, you ask for Mashiach and that includes everything already with one, with one fell swoop. If only, if only everybody thought the way you did, Ephraim. Well, everybody's thinking about, you know, a, a sick neighbor, a sick friend. Unfortunately, well, you know... That's exactly right. That's exactly it. You know, I, yeah. I, I get so many requests to come sing or do video clips for kids who are not well. It's, just, it's, it's heartbreaking and it's out of hand. It's totally out of hand. And, and there's no one to comfort us. It's like it's just it's very painful. And, um, you know, we hope that Mashiach will still come before, before the new year. Actually, there's a nice word of the Baditcha of Tadik oh. who points out and says like this, Erev, Erev Rosh Hashanah, by Mincha. What do we say in Shemona Esrei? An hour left to the year that's finishing, and we say, Baruch Aleinu Es Hashanah Hazois, there's an hour left to the year. You're right. What could, what could happen already in one hour? What could happen? Right. That's exactly the point. With the right filler, a lot right can happen from Mashiach. With the right filler from Mashiach, this year can become, even though there's an hour left to the year, it can become a blessed year. If Mashiach comes, then the whole year becomes a happy year. Wow. Even there's one hour left to it. Amazing. You know, so... That, that's, about, that's about taking every minute as you can get it. And yeah, I remember exactly. this, this Melech Basodeh sounds like a song that could be an Israeli album part two. I don't know. Mm, good idea. <laughs> Maybe we should talk to Udi Tamari or Yuval. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Avram, I'd like to wish you a good Gebench Tior. I want to wish you much Hatzloch in the coming years. Uh, both, you know, you should see a lot of Nachas from your family, and we should see a lot of more music from you. But Miyat Hashem, like you said, Mashiach should come this year. Um, and yes, all the brachas to you and your family. You're doing a great service for Cloudy Israel, being a, a chauffeur for so many of us. And I only hope and pray that you can, you can bring people uplifting music, happy music, and uh, inspiring music, because that's one of the most important things today. Music speaks to all of us. It gives us chizuk, it pulls us through difficult times, it makes us dance in the happy times, and uh, you're doing a very important shlicha, so hatzlacha with that. Amen, shkoyach. I never saw it as that way, but you're right. Okay, very much, shkoyach. Have a music. Have a ksivach, Thank you Amen. very much. All Take the best. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye.